What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. And once again, we are live from IMTS. And right now we are at the SW Machine booth with my friend, Kirk. Ian, nice to, to see you. Again. How's the show been so far? It's been great. And I tell you what, aside from the show, it's great to be back in Chicago after four years I and mean, just to see so many colleagues and, and peers in the industry just being back in one place, getting back together. It's been great so far. There's really nothing like it. Yeah, it's great. Coming together as an industry, it's, it's so good for everybody able to come one-stop shopping, learn about the new trends, the new technologies, whatever's new out there. Great place to be seen and to go see other solutions. And it looks like you guys have some very large solutions here today. You know, they get bigger and bigger. Now this one behind us, this is kind of what pops in my head when I think SW machines. High production, high efficiency automation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So this is our BA322i machine, and you're exactly right. This is kind of one of our high runners. This is a twin spindle machine, 300 millimeter cube per spindle. Um, and that's the most important thing about SW products. That's our core business is dual or four spindle machining. And it's such a simple concept to think about. You got a horizontal machine with one spindle, you're gonna make a part, it's gonna take a certain amount of cycle time. But why not do two parts at the same time? Or four parts at the same time? Yeah, there's some challenges. It's a little bit more dedicated setup, but once you're set up and running in a high production uh, environment, it's just the most efficient use of space. It's the most efficient use of manpower. You're getting the biggest bang for your buck. It's a great investment in that asset, keeping the lights on, keeping that green light moving. And especially with something like this, you know, when we're talking about what's going on in the world with labor issues, with, you know, people trying to do more with less, a system like this is a really good way to help level up your production if you have the numbers to sustain it. it you, you know, it's exactly right. You got to think about the numbers. You know, the, the job shoppers, they play a really important part in our industry. And the fact of the matter is the vast majority of people coming to Chicago and attending IMTS, they're from shops of 50 people or, or fewer, right? Or and seven. It, there you go. You know, it's a very important part of our industry, no doubt. But when those volumes increase and you get into those jobs, 75,000, 100,000, 200,000 parts per year, that's where we step in. That's our niche. It's not for everybody. You know, it's not what everybody does. But once you get there, now we can address some of those manpower concerns. You don't have to go very far. Your diner, your fast food restaurant, I'm sure the service is here. The restaurants, when you go out and get your steak tonight, may not have that service that they did a few years ago, just with all the manpower shortages. So when we're in our high tech industry, you know, you got to have the right people, all the more difficult to find. So when you can go to the double spindle or quad spindle Absolutely. machine, it just means you have one fewer operator, two fewer operators than you may have done on a traditional solution. And especially when it comes to having fewer operators, this is an actually an this is an auto tending machine. So this has a full automation cell on it. Does that actually come with this package? So yeah, the 322 is the base machine and the, the I is the integration of the automation. So very easily we can bolt on this, uh, this solution. It means we've got a dozen trays of which we can load raw material into. And then the robot tending is basically gonna take all of the raw parts and load them into the first table. That's the other beautiful, beautiful thing about the SW solution is that we have two tables. SW machines are inherently minimum four axis machines, right? So you're gonna put your parts on this flat table, you know, very similar to a vertical machining center, right? It's very easy to put those parts in there. But once you close that door, you swap it around 180 degrees, now you can swap that upside, downside, go through the window fixture, whatever it may be. But it's so fast, it's so fast to rotate that table, your spindle on time, not your green light, but your spindle mm -hmm. on time is always green. That's true efficiency right there. Absolutely. Right? Let's go take a look actually inside this machine where the machining happens. So as you can see, when we say dual spindle, we're not just talking about a spindle here and a spindle here. This is essentially doing the exact same operation two at a time horizontally and like you said, with that extra axis. Exactly. So in this case, you see that our fixture that we just got done loading on the front side is still upside down, which is great. We've got fifth axis satellites on there so we can rotate the parts around very easily. And now we're doing the top machining. You know, we just rotate the table 90 degrees and we can go another 90 degrees to get the back side of the part. So another beauty of having our machines inherently being four axis machines is that we can always rotate the chip, the, the part upside down. And before we take the parts out of the machine, we're gonna flush them, we're gonna blow them off, get all those chips out, which is so much more critical in automate itself. It sounds so funny, but one of the main, like you said, things about horizontal machining is instead of having a vertical table where the chips wanna stay on it, 
just the way it's designed, it, all the chips go down, so it really helps eliminate the chips in the cut. And we tend to have a really, you know, tend to have longer cycle times in our machines, you know, be that 5, 10, 20, 40 minutes. So when we orient that part to the load on load area, we can have all the time in the world to turn that fixture upside down, blast it with the coolant, get the chips off so it doesn't go into automation. Because if you try to grab part that has chips all over it with a, uh, a robotic arm or put it in a tray, part's going to get damaged. So it just makes it a lot easier that way. So yeah, this is one of our bread and butter machines, the 322. But talking about two spindles, I hear you have a new machine here with one spindle, which for SW machines is a bit different. Let's go take a look. Absolutely. So as, as Ian said, you know, we have uh, single spindle machines in our portfolio. And to a large degree, this, uh, this configuration machine has grown quite a bit in the last, let's say, four years. So we're looking at a high pressure die cast uh, hybrid battery tray. You know, same thing, the industry is changing, you know? Yes. The internal combustion engine, it's not gonna go away completely, but it is going to be displaced to a large degree by electrification or hybrid applications. So we kinda, I wouldn't say we had the light bulb go off, but if you think about this large work area where I tend to have two spindles, well, if I just get rid of one spindle and now I have this really large workspace, I've got a really nice rectangular work envelope, right? And a rectangular part for this component, which is about 1.6 meters, if you were to guy a 1.6 meter, let's round it up to a two meter cube machining center, that's a big, big machine. Huge machine. So we bring a real big benefit of the productivity of the SW machine on a much nicer footprint. So you can see this big old aluminum block here. We're just kind of cutting out a dummy profile of a battery tray. This is about 25% uh, of the way through the process. Nice. By the end of the week, we'll have cut four profiles completely, something that's a little bit more representative of a, uh, a battery tray complete. And just so if you guys have not seen an SW machine or a large loading machine like this, this is actually where the part gets loaded in. So this entire thing will rotate into the machine on the other side. Am I correct? Yep, absolutely. So it's, it, again, you know, this part's way too huge. I don't know how many, you know, I think it's like a ton, right? It's too much. But you know, this high pressure die casting, this is very easy to manually just throw in there. And again, when that table is at, you know, the flat orientation, it's very easy for an operator. A little bit different than a tombstone. A lot of times you're forcing the parts in and right. gravity's always working against you. When we lay that part flat, traditionally, very easy to bring it in. So yes, we load out here. And when we're loading over here, we're machining on the backside. And that means you have no downtime. If exactly. you're doing it right, you got no downtime. This large table on our W weight machine rotates in four seconds. Right? Four seconds. Four seconds. So it, what's the max weight you can put on that? Oh boy, a lot. A lot. And a still lot. gonna go in four seconds. Exactly. And what do we got over on this side? I'd like to see actually inside this machine if we can. So as I stated, we are uh, only configuring this machine with one spindle. And again, long, long rectangular component makes a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, and we won't go through any tool changes right now as we uh, begin to hog out this material on here. But to the point that we made earlier, you know, all of the machining is going on right now when in principle in a, in a production environment and you're loading and unloading on the front side. Now, one thing about this machine that we were talking about a little earlier, this has linear motors. Absolutely. Tell us about linear motors, because I'm not super familiar with them. So the first machine we looked at was a ball screw machine. And anytime we're dealing with any ferrous materials, iron, steel, we're gonna put those parts on a ball screw machine. Why? Because if we were to go to linear motors, we will have maintenance issues. Linear motor technology is not new. It's quite easy, straightforward. You got a magnet and you got a motor. It's running up and down. But the beauty is no contact. There, right. There's no contact between the two. So I would say the biggest benefit is the speed. Linear motors are moving at 120 meters per minute. Meters per minute, not feet per minute. 120 meters, meters per, minute. per minute. It's zooming around. So when you get into those tool paths where you have 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 tools, all that parasitic time of changing the tools, going from point A to point B, this gets reduced by 50%. You're cutting that parasitic non-value added time in half. Um, another big benefit of linear drives uh, when you can use them is the fact that your maintenance cost goes down significantly versus a ball screw application. You know, ball screws, you know, one way or the other, in our machine tool business, you can't get away from it. You are gonna replace them from time to time. And they're expensive. They're expensive. <laughs> and you know, they can be time consuming, the time out of your production to replace or repair. Absolutely. So 
you know, with the linear motors, we just don't have those failures. It's an antidotal bit, but in the last two years, you know, for every one linear motor that we've sold, we've sold 25 ball screws. I'm happy to sell ball screws, and you know, it's the nature of the beast, but it just gives you an idea of the reduced man, uh, maintenance cost you have, which does translate into less maintenance hours and manpower, ultimately, when you get into those really big shops. And so aside from, obviously, the kind of EV manufacturer, the electronic manufacturers who are obviously going to gravitate towards this. What other, kind of, what other kind of industries or shops are putting this kind of machine on the floor? You know, it's anything high volume for sure. You know, and I, I do speak about EV. It is very significant to our business. We do a lot of automotive, um, but it translates past the battery and the powertrain side of things. Anytime you talk about electrification, you know, the automakers, they want to say, I have this range on my vehicle. It beats that guy's uh, range on, on his vehicle. So when that happens, you got to speak about efficiency of the total automobile. When you speak about the efficiency, and you now speak about light weighting. So a lot of these right. conventional components that are made from iron or steel, a lot of times are going to be transitioned to aluminum. So if we can go to aluminum, go to linear motors, smaller components, knuckles, control arms, whatever the case may be, now we're back to two spindle technology. Now we're into a reduced quantity of machines, which means less manpower, less maintenance, less floor space, less everything. Except this is really where we're coming. More production. More production. <laughs> there you go. Where can we find you online if we want to learn some more about SW Machines? www.sw-machines.com. And as always, you're going to be here all week with IMTS. All the way through Saturday, buddy. Make sure you guys come and check them out. Thank you very much for your time. Ian, thank you.